Get ready for your unofficial dental hygiene podcast. These are the tales of two hygienists, one East Coast RDH and one West Coast guy genist. Listen as they tackle the profession of dental hygiene with humor and enthusiasm. Now, please join Michelle Strange and Andrew Johnston as they tell you a tale of two hygienists. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of A Tale of Two Hygienists. This episode is brought to you in partnership with Clear, the makers of Spry products. You've heard them on the podcast before. You've heard of the ads that have been rolling lately. We had a chance today. We are at Chicago Midwinter, and we were able to sit down with Dr. Mark Cannon. And we had fan favorite Michelle Hudson on. And it was a fascinating conversation because I think one of the things that we think about with Xylitol, I think we understand we need to have five exposures of Xylitol for everyone. Here are the benefits. Here's what we get. We talked about the nasal health uh, last month. If you want to go back to that episode and listen to the nasal health episode, it's phenomenal. But one of the things that I'm still just so excited about with this podcast, with this episode with Dr. Mark Cannon is the whys behind it all and like the deeper dive into like the cellular part of what xylitol does, the prebiotic part of it. I think it frames the conversation in a different way, way that you don't ever think about before. And I'll be honest, (laughs) this is going to be, it's a deep dive. So I would say maybe this might not be one that you want to listen to in the car. Maybe this is you want to listen to in your car for the first run, but then go back, sit down, take notes on this one. This is about, it's about 30 minutes of deep CE level discussion, but in ways that you can understand this analogies are fantastic. I'm still just so happy about this one. I hope you enjoy it. So here's Michelle Hudson and Dr. Mark Cannon. All right, everyone, welcome to this interview portion of the podcast. We are joined today by Dr. Mark Cannon and by one of our favorite co-hosts, Michelle Hudson. High five. Hey, Michelle. High five over here. No, (laughs) sorry. Elbow, elbow, elbow. (laughs) Don't want to spread that COVID. I feel really bad that I gave Michelle uh, kind of a bigger billing than you, doctor. I'm so sorry about that. All the excitement, all the, sorry. No, no, that's no problem. I'm always surprised when they let me come back. So (laughs) (laughs) That's what they told me, too. (laughs) They're always surprised. Hey, thanks for having me, though. Yeah, thank you for Uh, making the time, for real. So this is going to be my favorite podcast ever. Uh, Everyone get ready to learn from the most brilliant person on the planet. Thank you. Dr. Mark Cannon. I'll I'll pay you later. Was it small cash, small Uh, bills? Please, I prefer. They're they're easier. through TSA without getting flagged. This is true. Just put it underneath your, in your shoe, (laughs) underneath your feet. (laughs) You'll be taller and they'll never notice. They'll never notice. The very first time that I met Dr. Mark Cannon was at the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health 2017 scientific session is what it was called at that time. Now we call it Collaboration Cures. And Dr. Mark Cannon was speaking at that uh, event on probiotics specific for oral health, which changed my entire clinical experience there forward. And when it comes to what you're going, we're going to talk about today is xylitol. And I know that Andrew talks about xylitol a lot on the podcast, several episodes on xylitol, the benefits of, but get ready. Dr. Cannon is going to blow your mind with his knowledge on xylitol. Well, thank you so much. And part of what she's referring to is the fact I've been talking on probiotics for now 25 years and I was talking back at the old international probiotic symposiums that used to be held and which they don't have anymore here in the United States but I was just recently in Rome at the international probiotic meeting lecturing presenting my research on probiotics and autism and there's many different autisms but probiotics and prebiotics we definitively proved has quite an effect upon the different autisms. And we're not the only ones. You know, there's been a lot of great research done with fecal matter transplants on all sorts of neurological diseases, whether it's anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, or even with autism. And it's just an amazing amount of work being done in Europe right now on probiotics where the, the Italians and the Germans they are doing the huge, incredible studies. Unfortunately, we've fallen behind. But today we're here to talk about prebiotics because xylitol is a prebiotic. And I want to start off with this analogy. 
we as human beings, we are all cruise ships. We're a big cruise ship and we have in us and on us our passengers, which are all of our commensal bacteria. And they're called commensalists because that means to share table. When we eat, we feed our commensals. We also have a crew, and the crew are probiotics. The probiotic bacteria after our crew because if they don't make the neurotransmitters we need to have, we have issues. We go the wrong direction in life. If we don't have the right crew, either our commensals get underfed or overfed. It affects our whole direction in life or what the probiotics as the crew does to us, the host, the cruise ship, and our commensals. Now, we also have a little slight little thing going on with our symbionts. We have symbionts, which are like often our probiotics and our commensals, but they can strain shift to become the pathobionts. And pathobionts are a cross between the pathogenic and the normal. Now, the pathogenic bacteria, those are the Somali pirates trying to take over our cruise ship. And they direct us on a completely different path. So just remember that analogy whenever you talk about life, how you're going, and what your health is. Because the prebiotics are part of your diet, part of your intake, that affect all your bacteria, your commensals, your pathobionts, your probiotic bacteria. And they help your probiotic bacteria by clearing the table to make more room for them on that cruise ship. So that's the best analogy you can ever keep in your mind. And xylitol is a tremendous prebiotic, because you know this, because you've been to my lectures. That goes back hundreds of thousands of years. Because during great climatic changes in our lifetime as a species, and the species before us, like Homo erectus, which overlapped slightly with other species like Neanderthalensis and so on, that there was a change in the climate that changed what we could eat. And as we moved back to coastal land and by the river, we adapted, we evolved to go back in the water and swim a lot more than we ever did before, losing a lot of our hair, having our hands change, our hips change, our feet change, but our diet changed. Because then we had to start looking under the ground where our intelligence allowed us to dig up these big plants, these tubers that were loaded with d xylose and xylulose and xylitol and all the other like mannitol and nisitol, all those. So that changed our gut too because our bacteria learned to live with it. But most importantly, and you know this because you've seen me lecture on this, our mitochondria started to use it. Now mitochondria are just bacteria that are within our cells. A lot of our organelles, little things, parts of our cells, and they're called eukaryotes, our cells. We have picked up bacteria to do all of our functions for us. Everything came from 3.5 billion years ago, this one unicellular type life form. And bacteria became more complicated and viruses became less complicated. Then we built up all these multicellular organisms, finally ending up with people. And because we could specialize everything, we could develop intelligence, but that intelligence allowed us to dig deep, get down and get those tubers out, break down, use that meaty vegetation, you know, to survive on, especially roasting it with fire. And that's how we got xylitol into our system. And now our body produces 15 grams of xylitol a day through three major pathways. But one of the most important pathways, dietary, is vitamin C becomes xylitol. If you look back at all the research done on this and all the publications, you'll see the beautiful diagram of L-ascorbic acid becoming xylitol. And it goes back between xylose, dexylulose, and xylitol. Those are all three important things for mankind. Xylitol is the first step of energy production for mitochondria. And the first research, and that goes back to the 1960s. So like, we're not talking anything particularly new, but because xylitol is that first step of energy production before you get to the Krebs cycle. You guys remember that from high school oh, maybe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, TCA, Krebs cycle from high school. It's so important they teach in high school, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> and so that first step is xylitol and xylitol dehydrogenase. That's why xylitol is so important right now in cancer research. 
because we're really looking at how it modulates because we also know that xylitol inhibits all cancer cell lines. So you can hit, inhibit them all in the lab, and we're doing mice studies right now, some, like some previous mice studies, but we're doing some special mice studies right now at Northwestern with different species, with different humanized mice, and different types of cancer cell lines. And we're showing this great change in the meta, metabolomics, which is the you know, metabolic byproducts of everything, of the tumor cells. So now we're fine-tuning it with different other avenues. So I really hope that in two or three years, xylitol will be a major part of cancer treatment too. But in the meanwhile, it's very important nasally for airway. I know you've heard about that a lot. Extremely important for nasally because the epithelium, and this is something I always lecture on when it comes to probiotics and prebiotics, your outside cells, whether it's inside your nose, inside your mouth, inside your, off your skin, those cells attach using the same type of mechanism. They all attach together the same. And pathogens actually use the same receptor site time and time and time again. We all see, we know it's the beta-1 integrin receptor site. So we now know how to start blocking a lot of this. And xylitol is beautiful. It prevents growth of a lot of the bad bacteria, period. Whether it's on your skin or in your mouth. So now, one of the exciting things, I know we're off the mouth a little bit, is that they're putting xylitol on all sorts of skin products. They're everywhere. Everyone's coming out with xylitol skin products. And when someone uses it, they go like, my acne goes away, or my psoriasis is much better, which is even more hysterical, because you would say, what's the mechanism? There is a mechanism for that, for psoriasis and for eczema. And every dermatologist now is talking about probiotics, and prebiotics. You know why? Tell us. Ow. <laughs> it's because a dermatologist a couple of years ago discovered a startling fact that the skin's actually attached to the body. What? Wow. Yeah, isn't Shocker that amazing? For everyone. You know, it took a few years before that for <laughs> physicians to understand that the mouth is actually part of the body, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just this whole thing of not being integrative. So the key word is integrative. So when it comes to therapy, your hygienist, you have to have integrative therapy. The biggest statement I, you'll, you'll hear many times because certain bacterium like Porphyrmonas gingivalis, FIMA type 2, the strain that's the bad strain like FIMA type 4, they go inside your epithelial cells. They're inside. They're intracellular. Once they get inside the cell, they form these little vacuoles. They grow in the vacuoles. They go next to the mitochondria. They start to suck energy off the mitochondria. There's ATP release, which is called the danger signal in cell health because you're leaking ATP. It's like a gas tank leaking in your car. It's not a safe thing to have happen. I actually have blew a fuel line on my 72 Dodge Charger <laughs> heading down the road one time and caught fire. <laughs> so I can tell you personally <laughs> that it's not the best thing in life to have happen. <laughs> but, you know, when you see flames come out from underneath the hood and smoke <laughs> as you're heading down the road, you kind of go like, should I pull over? <laughs> If you go faster, I think it puts it out, right? Well, actually, yeah. <laughs> actually, I saw I saw a service station. They had a car wash, and I, in my brilliance, I drove into the service station by the car wash. They had a big barrel full of wet cloth for drying off cars. Opened up the hood, grabbed a ton of them, and smothered the fire. <laughs> I'm sitting there, people watching me. I'm sweating bullets, like. Damn it, I did it. I go like, of course, I'm about uh, 30 feet from a fuel pump. That's probably not the best place to be. So then I walk into the service station. And I said to them, guys, if you called 911, they don't have to come now. I, I put the fire out. And they looked at me and said, what fire? <laughs> they didn't see a flaming vehicle coming right at them. That's good. So that's a really great analogy for what we're dealing with because we've had this flaming vehicle coming right at us for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. 
And no one's been putting out the fire, even that was a desperate move on my part. It's true, 100% true. I didn't make that up for the analogy. Probably also one of the dumbest things I've done. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea, and it worked, so I guess I'm okay. I just lost a few hairs off my arms. You know, They grew back. They grew back. Hair is fine. <laughs> But and if you're a hygienist, when you see these patients and you're you're talking to them about oral hygiene, you got to do something like probiotics and prebiotics because yes. the bacteria live within the cells. Now, here is a trick question. I know I've thrown at a bunch of hygienists before is what makes gingiva swell when you have periodontal disease? Well, it's a combination. It's going to be the inflammation from the bacteria, the viruses, and and it can even be fungi. So it can yeah. be can, candida. So, see, it was a trick question right so here. I, it was a trick question, and I knew because she gave a wonderfully straight answer, and it's the logical, straightforward answer is edema due to the inflammation. Because after all, Porphyrmonas gingivalis tells the macrophages nearby to give off more nitric oxide which expands the capillaries, so more blood can get in to feed the cells that are infected. See, PG has a, a system it works by, has a plan. It's evolved to have a plan. It doesn't have a brain, but the evolution has this little plan. That's why it's known as an extremophile. That's why it's known as being the ultimate gorilla, is because it sneaks in, it gets into one cell, it opens up the tight junctions, it lets other bacteria in to confuse your immune system so it doesn't respond to the porphyrmonas gingivalis. It's a fent. It's called destabilizing the front. Many people have seen that in history before. Fents, uh, you destabilize the front to make the enemy put the resources in the wrong area, the reserves. So what PG does, it lets all these other bacteria in because more inflammation, but it goes within the cells, turns off the tight junctions epigenetically within the cells, lives there, and it turns the mitochondria down to put the cell in senescence. When you have ATP leaking, it goes in senescence. So all of a sudden, all your epithelial cells in your gums, they're in old age. They're at the nursing home, and inside all of them are these PGs sitting on their rocking chairs, going back and forth, killing time, because they replicate within the cells. So your cells become hosts. It's a parasite. Parasites are strange. They don't want you to die. They just want to keep replicating, replicating within you. And so you build up these because they don't die. You keep producing more cells underneath. That's why the gingiva swells up. And it's also not just super boggy. I mean, if it was all just inflammation, you could grab it, squeeze it, and squeeze the blood out of it. It would go down in size. Try that. It doesn't work. Just wring out the gingiva like a wet rag. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that, can you? No, you can't put a hair dryer and have it shrink. <laughs> the, the thing is, is you have too many cells piled up, but it needs the extra capillaries to feel, feed it. What does that remind you of, Andrew? A benign tumor. Mm. So basically, all these decades, periodontists been doing gingivectomies, cutting off benign tumors. We didn't know we were t treating a benign tumor. Of course, in the same time, as you know, that's why xylitol works so well, because it keeps it from going anywhere. It keeps it from first forming in the mouth, keeps it from forming the biofilm, right? Because it keeps it from getting the biofilm because it inhibits the, the strep mutans also, so you don't get the biofilm to begin with and inhibits Fusobacterium nucleatum. That's well documented. So you don't go from orange complex to red complex. So you stop it at the beginning. Same thing with probiotics. You know, you get them on some ProBiOr Pro or something like that. You get those good bacteria in there. They inhibit the bad bacteria. So you, you cut it off at the pass. You're like the 300 at Thermopylae, right? <laughs> you cut the Persians off at the pass. You don't let them in. That's no. going to be the artwork for this show. So yeah, the, the 300. 300, yeah. <laughs> when you look at the, whoever the actor was that was really ripped, was you me. can put my face on there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold the shield and the sword up high. <laughs> But see, that's where we're all. We're kind of like the, the heroes getting in there, stopping everything at the pass. That's a, it's a beautiful way of thinking of it. Because once it gets in the bloodstream, you know what happens with PG. You get in the endothelial cells. They populate within the endothelial cells. They get into the intermedia where they do exactly the same thing, building that up, making that thicker. Mm -hmm. That's how your 
hearts, the arteries get hard is they're getting filled full of redundant tissue inside. And then they give off waste products. And those waste products are those very famous dihydroceramides, that they, those lipids that they thought were from diet. That's famous. Which yeah, yeah, because they, they thought it was from diet. They're very famous. I, I know them okay. all well. I get their autographs. <laughs> I get their autographs. Each other <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might say they're infamous, but they're well known <laughs> that we get these lipids, right? And, and, they, and they always made a big deal that was from French fries and everything else, but they're actually bacterial byproducts. And then, of course, it breaks down the blood-brain barrier. It actually changes that in such a weird way because PG will make the blood-brain barrier so it keeps out your immune cells. Mm. And that is the craziest thing. It lets in all the lipopolysaccharides. It lets in the ginger pains. Your brain starts to go to heck. And the hand basket, which starts in the average person in their 20s. Great autopsy studies and biopsy studies done at Northwestern University Medical School. Alzheimer's starts in your 20s because of periodontal disease. Wow. So I have a question. So many in, in healthcare, specifically in dentistry, you have a patient that you go through non-surgical periodontal therapy with your patient and, and you send them home and, you know, traditionally chlorhexidine, um, I don't think we've used chlorhexidine and I don't think I've used that in well over years. 15 yeah. years. Yeah. And, uh, and then... Fast forward a few months, the patient returns, and rarely will you see a patient where they still do not show signs of inflammation. They still have the presence of disease. So non-surgical periodontal therapy alone is not working when it comes to PG, correct? Like you have to be very specific, and home care isn't just about using an electric toothbrush, flossing, which I rarely even recommend for my periodontally involved patients, water, flossers, etc. But it also includes talking diet. So pre and probiotics are very important in these patients. And Absolutely. xylitol plays a very important role. Huge. In, and even antibiotic therapy with many of these patients as well. Because they're still there. I mean, they're still within your cells. You don't get rid of them. A good example for that is if you know someone with psoriasis or psoriatic arthritis. That's actually from beta hemolytic strep, from your streptococcus pyogenes infection that you had back when you were a kid. The thing is, they often stay around. You become a carrier of that strep for decades and decades, and that affects your immune system. And so now everyone in medicine is starting to realize, uh, sure, you put someone on antibiotics for five days or something like that. No, you don't kill them. You knock them back. You kill your commensals. You kill all your probiotics as much as you do anything else. So the key thing is you have to use your prebiotics, like you mentioned, xylitol in mouth rinse and tablet and toothpaste, as much as you can get in there. My big story, and you, you've heard me say this before, when someone says, I tell the patient to brush better, I always say, Oh, God, how do you get those little tiny brushes inside the cells? I love it. I, I mean, I, I just like want to know too. how you do it, dude. I want to know how you get them inside those cells. Because those cells, go, they'll, they live on and on and on because they're senescent. They're not dying like they're supposed to. And the PG's still there, damn it. And so is the staph aureus often. And people have repeated staph infections. In the skin, you got the staphylococcus epidermidis does the same thing. In fact, it lives on forever, often in fibroblasts. So you end up... I just talked to orthopedic surgeon. I mean, this is so funny because I deal with medicine all the time, whether it's a dermatologist or, in this case, an orthopedic surgeon. He was asking me, Mark, what do you think about wound infections? Because well, it seems like we're getting more and more wound infections. I go, well, that's from the staph epidermidis being within, because that's what well, they'll culture out, within the fibroblasts down in the dermis. So it doesn't matter how much you scrub the skin to clamp before surgery. He goes, yeah, we can't see him. No matter how hard we scrub the skin, put disinfectants on, we still get an infection there. I go, that's why, because you let those little critters loose. Now, what I should have told him is rub the skin down with some xylitol now, but mm. have the patient take xylitol beforehand. You know, in, in a lot of countries, they have xylitol IV solutions. Oh, really? I did not know that. Yeah, because xylitol feeds, if you're septic, xylitol feeds the body and your normal cells perfectly fine while you're in the ICU and xylitol will feed them but not the bad bacteria 
So you're blocking viruses, which xylitol will block a lot of viruses, right? We know all the great research on xylitol blocking. We know how it does now. Well, this big explanation about they didn't know the mechanism. Mm -hmm. We now know the mechanism. Like we now know the mechanism how xylitol blocks cancer growth. We proved it definitively, the mechanism. We know exactly down to exact metabolomics now. That was just recently. That was my study. I haven't even published it yet because we're not done with phase four of it. But we know the exact mechanism. And, uh, yeah, we're adding the chemo to I the mice. I think you're amazing. Don't you think he's amazing? <laughs> <He's> awesome. <Yeah. laughs> I told you. He was... Yeah. And, and, but we do know mechanisms, and that's the whole reason no one accepted Linus Pauling with vitamin C. He was saying it prevents cold. He can make you more healthy. Prevent, you know, he had great results with it with cancer patients. It was the xylitol. Vitamin C was breaking down to xylitol. And in his case, when he was doing that 1970 Swiss school study with the common cold, that was a coronavirus infection. When they came back here in the United States, they were doing it was rhinovirus. And guess what? Xylitol does not work against rhinovirus. It has a different attachment area, so it doesn't work against rhinovirus. So that's why there was a discrepancy in the studies. You know, unfortunately, we have bad studies reported, and people believe them all the time. And I tell everyone, look at it very carefully. There's, there's an infamous study out there. I have to bring this up. It's a xylitol oral health study. It's the Christina Stetson Blick study that she and Savant Twatman, they're brilliant people, great people, did that study with like 100 kids, and they had two groups, a group that had a fluoride tablet and a group that had a xylitol fluoride tablet. And at the end of the study, they had a problems with cooperation and mm -hmm. staying on it. At the end of the study, there was no difference in the groups. Mm, I don't believe the groups, that. Well, wait, think about it very carefully. Group with fluoride a group with xylitol and fluoride. There is no control group. They're both active experimental groups. Number one, horrible design. You always have a negative control, always have a positive control. Okay, okay number one. Two experimental groups, and there's no difference between the group. So let's do a little mathematics. This is the only way you can look at things mathematically because their conclusion was xylitol didn't work because there was no difference between the two with the carries rate. Mm. Is that true? If you have a xylitol and fluoride, one group, xylitol, the other group. Let's give them numbers. Let's give xylitol the number of two. Okay? So let's, oh, let's first, oh, let's give fluoride a number of two. Okay? And so let's say X, let's just call xylitol zero, because I said it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Plus two is equal to X, which is zero. See, it doesn't work mathematically. You reverse it, though. You say xylitol is 2, mm. and fluoride is 0. 2 plus 0 is equal 2. It was the fluoride that didn't work in this population group. Okay. They reversed. They had the right data. Their conclusion was so flawed. And I have often shown this in lecture. And, I go, and they found a result. There was no difference between the two groups. Therefore, the xylitol didn't work. And without fail, there would be a smart guy in the back raising his hands really slow. That's backwards. <laughs> if there's no difference, it was the fluoride that had no effect. That uh, smart guy in the back was Dr. The Mark Cannon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it wasn't me. I look at that guy going, you're so smart. <laughs> and it, without fail, there's always someone who does that. And it's one of the lectures I give on bad research because there's tons of bad research out there that are just like crazy. Even meta-analysis and systematic reviews can cherry pick only bad articles about something and have a completely different result from another meta-analysis and systematic mm -hmm. review. Mm -hmm. So basically... With over 800 articles published on xylitol, and how beneficial it is. It's like when someone says there's nothing published on probiotics. You've seen my slides on that. Over 33,000 publish publications in the scientific literature. Uh, there's tons. Over 2,800 clinical trials with xylitol, the same thing. There's 800 articles published on the effectiveness of xylitol in everything from the Journal of Periodontics to now we have all these cancer journals, International Journal of Oncology, for example, about the efficacy of xylitol. And besides... If you eat blueberries, you're eating xylitol. If you eat strawberries, you eat xylitol. They're loaded. Cauliflower is loaded with uh, xylitol. So people act so strange. And the reason being is we are omnivores. We ate a lot 
of xylose and dexylose and xylitol in our diet going back like at least 200,000 years, maybe much longer. Because God knows how long we've been digging up, let's say for Homo sapiens, because of our lifespan, 250, 280,000 years. But um, dogs are pure carnivores. They never ate the xylitol. Their mitochondria, that's, why it that's can, right. Their okay. mitochondria cannot use it for energy source. They have no xylitol dehydrogenase in their mitochondria. So they're completely different animals. Like if you sit down and you have a really big vegan meal, I hope to God you don't give it to your dog. Because mm-hmm. that's not the food they're supposed to have. That's right. No matter what people try to tell you, that's not what they evolved right. to have. How many, how many uh, wolves did you show, see go? eat out of a grain field so question so for our periodontally involved patients our high risk perio patients and our high risk caries patients what is if you had a patient that presented and of course that's very common i think many of my patients that are high perio risk they are also typically high caries risk and and uh, and I don't know what your experience is, and, but we have all of our patients using xylitol. And then since the very first time, um, uh, I was so, I'm so grateful for that presentation. It was my favorite presentation of that entire event. And let me just tell y'all, Dr. Cannon, wherever he speaks, his room is overflowing. Like, well, thank you. I mean, and y'all are getting a little taste of him, so you can. He's yeah, but he's they a me little the bit bathroom. So <laughs> he's he overflows. He's a little and bit intelligent, <laughs> and he's extremely funny. So for our high risk patients, it's not just about drilling and filling, especially in our you know our our sweet kids. Let's talk about them. I know that you have a real passion for pediatric. And then our perio patients, it's not about scaling and root planing. That's not solving the problem, correct? That's treating the symptom. Yes. Only treating the symptom, and especially when we come to pediatrics because, you know, I am a pediatric dentist. I'm actually in the Department of Otolaryngology. I'm a professor at Northwestern at the Feinberg School of Medicine. But the, the important thing about this is when you see a child, who's like three years old, early childhood carries or severe early childhood carries, they are already marked for a life of issues already because they have these great studies published in JAMA Pediatrics where they follow these kids for 27 years. They're the ones that have the cardiac issues early on. They have the ones that they screen with CIMT and everything. They have all the issues. So, yeah, what you have to do is change the dysbiosis. Changing the dysbiosis means working on airway, because <laughs> it could be mouth breather. Airway could be one of the biggest issues at the very, very beginning with decay and periodontal disease. So I think airway, they have to breathe first. Air has to come in first. Then food. You know, what they eat, their diet. You'd be amazed at these kids at the junk they're eating nonstop. It says horrible junk. So they have all the wrong nutrition and then you got to try to fight with that darn dysbiosis and the first things I do I give them like three-year-olds they leave with samples in this case it's the BioGaia prodentis because it comes as a liquid or as a small chewable for little kids and then of course xylitol we hit them with lots of xylitol because we have to clear the field I mean, just because you're going to change the diet doesn't mean you're going to get rid of those bad guys immediately. You got to clear the field with the xylitol. So we use the xylitol gel. And so I, they come in, these parents leave with all these samples and brochures and information. And I feel the most important time I spend is in education and talking to the parents and the patient. Same thing with perio and teenagers. You know, those perio kids, those teenagers... Again, there's a triad, and I know we're running out of time, but here's the triad for teenagers. Look in their mouth, periodontal disease. Everything is awful. Of course, they'll have caries associated with that. It almost looks like you're looking at a meth mouth. Sometimes it is because of Vyvanse, because they're on um, these horrible ADHD, you know, medication. ADHD medications like Concerta and Ritalin and all that. And then acne. A lot of them will have severe acne. They take off their mask. They have severe acne. And then anxiety, depression. Mm-hmm. That's the triad because it works in the mouth. It works on the skin. It works neurologically. Don't just 
brush their teeth and get mad them so you're not brushing yeah. your teeth. Get in there. Treat the dysbiosis yes. because that's affecting the skin. That's affecting their mentality. That's affecting their life. That could end up that child actually later being suicidal because you are not going toward the issue you're, you're wearing, wearing these blinders and you're not looking at the child as a human being. Oh, my gosh. So, doctor, honestly, I have so many more questions. Really, I wanted to ask more about questions about the studies because I feel like that's a whole other podcast, though, unfortunately. We're, oh, that's we two or three time, podcasts. I mean, <laughs> Well, I appreciate the time that you've taken. Yeah. Michelle, thank you so much for like really uh, spearheading the, this discussion. I really appreciate you guys being on. Uh, doctor, if someone wanted to reach out to you, if they wanted to watch some of your lectures and see where you're speaking, where can they find you? Well, if you Google me, you'll find me for sure. Okay. Yeah. So far, they haven't removed me yet. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dr. Cannon <laughs> speaks all over the world. He is an international speaker. He is a professor at Northwestern. And uh, just read his bio. It will take you days to complete it. <laughs> we are better because of Dr. Mark Cannon. Well, thank, thank you so you very so much. much. And thank you for the opportunity to tell my little story here. Because, uh, you know, it's, again, remember the analogy of being a cruise ship. Because, you know, when a cruise ship has an outbreak of rotavirus or anything else, look what happens. You're the best analogy. Yeah, yeah we are. And uh, to end this, and I know we just have to, I think so many people will go at me like, okay, any xylitol is going to work. That is not true. Just like probiotics, uh, Dr. Cannon very specific with that. Probior, the research supports that. A xylitol, you want to use products that have the research behind them that are trusted and that aren't full with a bunch of crap. Oh, so, yeah. There's some stuff online. <laughs> uh, you go to Amazon, you see stuff like this. Like a mom just showed me a toothpaste. She goes, oh, this has xylitol. And, and xylitol was like the number five ingredient. Uh, before <laughs> it was sorbitol, which does not work anywhere near as well. So they just put the xylitol in just to get people to buy it. That's not an active ingredient at that uh, amount of concentration. Yes, we've done the studies on it. Yes, the studies are published on how much xylitol has to be in the product. you got to run about, if you really want it good, you want to run about 20% xylitol, at least 10% xylitol in the product, in the solution. On the skin, 1% to 5% is fine, but in the mouth, 10 to 20% because of dilution from saliva. So I, in my office, we use Spry. We use a lot of Spry products. We use the Spry gel on the little kids. Uh, a Spry Enamel Max is the most amazing toothpaste, period. One day we'll do a broadcast on that because it'll mm. take the whole podcast to go over all the specific ingredients in Enamel Max. Let's do it. Let's do it. Can yeah. I be a part of that one too? Of course, you'd be a part. <laughs> of that. Well, can I be? A, I want to be I there think, too. I think it's necessary to be on that. <laughs> one. Oh, okay, it's just long as I can be there too. Okay, okay. Uh, you are incredible. Well, thank you, thank you. So, you guys are all incredible. Thank you. This has been a lot of fun out here. Thank you so much. Yeah, you bet. It's been a great. Thanks for letting me come back, my friend. You are welcome anytime. <laughs>